Before using any machine in the shop, you should read and understand the owner's manuals. This unit here is called a shaper. A shaper is like a big router table, the kind of like a router table that's on steroids. A router table usually has a router in the bottom that has maybe one to two horsepower. This shaper is gonna have five horsepower powering the blade. Now you'll notice as we take a look here, the blade is much bigger than a router bit blade. So we need to make sure our hands stay away from that because that's gonna do a lot more damage to our fingers or hands if our hands get into that cutter. As with all of our machines, we should read the warning labels before operating the machine. The warning label is located down here next to the power switch. Many of our safety rules that we use on our router table are also going to apply to the shaper. For example, we're going to run our end grain first on the shaper to keep our uh, wood pieces from having chips on them. We're going to use uh, safety devices to keep our hands away from the blades or bits. We're not going to operate the machine and have our hands over the miter track without some kind of push block or push shoe. What we're going to use the shaper for is creating a raised panel or a style and rail type door. Now this is an example of a glass door. It would be used like on a gun cabinet or other cabinet where you wanted the door to be see-through. We cut out the back side so glass can fit in there. Mainly what it's doing is we're using this machine to create a cope joint. Now this is an example of a cope joint here one of uh, many different types of cope joints you could do. This is one size or one shape cut in there, and the other has an exact mirrored image that they can fit together and make that joint with a little bit of glue in there. So that is a cope joint. This machine is going to be running the end so we can create this notch or this rail cut on our work pieces. Another type of door that we could do, glass, would be a raised panel. And when we talk about a raised panel, the frame is the same, but it's got this sloped up profile and the panel is raised in the center. So we have a shaper that's set up just specifically for cutting this raised panel. It cuts the profile around the edge. Then we have a machine set up to cut the rail ends, and I showed you that just a second ago, that's that cope cut on the rail and we also have a shaper set up for cutting the style cut or the inside panel cut here and that's this side on this board so we have three shapers typically we have set up for our door configuration in the shop so i've put up our cope crafter here and the cope crafter is an accessory that can be used on the router table the cope crafter rides in the miter track and as we clamp it down and it clamps our workpiece it will actually float a little bit on the table so there's less friction as you're working through the machine so the cope crafter is a device that's going to be used to keep our hands a safe distance away from the blade we also have one of these that's a little bit bigger it's about 36 inches long that is called a panel crafter, and we use the panel crafter for creating arches in our doors and panels. And here's an example of an arch door. You can see that that top rail has an arch cut in there, and the panel, this one's a flat panel, also has the arch cut in there. So you could also take a raised panel and put that arch in there if you like that arched look. But the panel crafter is for doing the arches on the rails and panels. It's a wider jig or wider device. The cope crafter is going to allow us to put our material up like this and clamp it down so we can run the ends of the board to the machine. If we were up here just trying to run the end of the board through the machine, we have no wood on the surface area of the fence. And so it's going to fall into that blade and possibly get sucked in or stuck and wedged between the fence and the blade 
and it's got a lot of force so we wouldn't really be able to hold on to it very well and keep it from getting sucked in. So we need to use a device like our Cope Crafter in order to hold that securely. On our other shaper, you'll notice this device on top, and this is another accessory that goes with the shaper. This is called a power feeder. And so what this is doing, it is attached to the shaper, although it is not part of the shaper, it is a separate unit. And it's going to grab our material and feed it in. So as I put my wood up underneath here, there's some feed rollers that are gonna grab it and keep it pushed down to the fence, or to the table, and tight to the fence and feed it through. If I come to this side and take a look, you can see those feed rollers right up along the fence there. That's what's holding our workpiece down and keeping it from shooting back at us. So on our shapers, both the panel feeder and the cope crafter or panel crafter are safety devices that are gonna be used to keep your hands a safe distance away from, from the cutter head. So as I bring my board up here to get cut, there's a few things we need to check first off. We want our board to be higher than this uh, scrap sacrificial piece back here. If our board is lower than this sacrificial piece, what's gonna happen is the clamp is not going to clamp onto our workpiece and it's gonna move around in there. So if I put my two boards here, I should feel, it doesn't have to be a lot, but I should feel that my good piece is thicker or higher up than our scrap or sacrificial pieces. When I line up the machine to make my cut before I clamp this down, I want to start in the same spot every time. So as the operator, what I like to do is I like to take the side of this jig and line it up with the side of this fence. So this part of the fence right here where my finger is and the side of this machine are in the same uh, place when I start. That gives me a reference point so every time I cut I'm starting in the same spot so all my cuts are the same. When we push our board in we're going to push it all the way up tight against the fence so it's going to hit up against this fence here through the machine. When I have it in place I'm going to use this black knob here to clamp down the Cope Crafter. Now I need to be careful that my fingers are not underneath this clamp here as that's pushing, pushing down with about 90 PSI or 90 pounds per square inch. And if your finger's under there, it's not gonna know the difference and it's gonna just wanna push down. So keep your fingers back and put pressure on your workpiece and then you can clamp it down. You can kind of hear that it sounds like there's a small air leak and that's because the Cope Crafter is floating for less friction on the tabletop surface. So now our board's lined up, we're clamped down, we're gonna go ahead and turn the machine on. And that's just under here, you're gonna push the green button to start, the red round button to turn off. So I'm gonna start it, let it get to full speed, and then I'm gonna work my workpiece through the cutter. So I ran both ends of this board, and that's typically what we would do when we're building our doors. Okay, we would just take it out, we'd run it through, we would turn it around the same good side down and run it again so both ends are cleaned up. Now what we don't want to do is run the same end twice because this machine is set up to take about a sixteenth of an inch off per pass. So if we line up this board again and cut it again, it's going to take another sixteenth of an inch off of our workpiece, and then our door is not going to be square if we didn't do that to both pieces. So generally we're running the workpiece through one time per end. And those sacrificial pieces on the end of the jig are to help this profile not blow out. If those jigs were not there, this would be torn out and broken really bad. And so that we use that to keep our workpiece in a little bit better shape. 
You may have also noticed as I ran both pieces, I worked the, the Cope Crafter from the right side of the machine to the left side of the machine, and I know which way to go based on the orientation of the blade. So that flat, sharp edge of the blade that we see there, that's the lead edge of the knife. So it should be rotating in a counterclockwise position. So if that's spinning counterclockwise, we wanna go this way to feed the workpiece in against the cutter. Now on a shaper, the direction of the bit can be changed to forward or reverse. Um, and typically this setting is something that is not messed with. Your instructor would have this machine set up for you and you would come up and run this machine through, run your pieces through the machine. So with the Cope Crafter, um, when this is locked down, it's going to kind of float on our work table. And so because of that reason, there are some little stops that have been mounted to the table so that this Cope Crafter doesn't fall off and hit the floor. So that's what those little lips are on this side and this side of the table so we don't lose the Cope Crafter onto the floor. We're coming over to the shaper with the power feeder on here next. Now we have got our cross grain cut first because it's gonna usually chip out on us a little bit. And now what we can do is take this machine and run it with the grain and it's going to clean up some of those chips if you have some chips that are a little bit worse off. Now this is going to create a groove for our panel or glass to ride in as we make our door. So it's gonna create this groove and you would put this groove all the way around your frame. So if this is my rail piece and this is my style piece, as they fit together, both boards would have this groove put in here to make uh, an opening for the panel. So we're gonna go ahead and run this piece through there. Now, I have this set up so my good side was down over on the Cope Crafter. It's going to remain down over here. So as I'm looking at my joint, this radius part here, this little cove, is going to be down. So as I feed this through, I want this down on the table. I'm gonna turn this on, and again, this is typically set up for doing our doors, so we don't really need to mess with the feed speed or anything like that. We do need to turn this machine on separately, and we're gonna turn it on, there's number one and number two. We're gonna put it to number two. Now, if you accidentally put it on the wrong one, you're not gonna be able to feed your workpiece in because the rollers are spinning backwards and they're trying to actually drive your workpiece out this way. So it won't feed it in the wrong way or anything like that. But when we put it on two, now it's gonna grab our workpiece and feed it into the machine. This is a separate machine, so just like our other machines, you should find the warning labels and make sure that you view them before each use so that you're in the right frame of mind before operating that equipment. So there's one over here on the side, there's one up here on the front, and as always, don't ever stick your hands underneath the machine. So if you get a board that gets stuck, don't try to put your fingers under there and move that out of the way. We don't want them to get pinched by those feed rollers. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and we're gonna run a piece through here. All right, so now this is the piece that just came out. It has the tongue on the ends and it has the groove in there. So now as we put that together, you can see there's room in that piece for a panel to slide into. So we would actually run all four pieces through this machine.
The setup for these machines is going to depend on what you're doing in your shop. Our shop at the school here, we're going to have these set up for our doors. And so typically the instructor will set up these machines and fine tune them. And you, the student, are just gonna come run your pieces through. We're not gonna mess with the settings on these machines. So our third shaper is going to look just like this one. It's going to be the shaper on the bottom with the power feeder on top. It just has a different blade in the, in the machine, and it's going to have the fence set at a different parameter. But besides that, it does do a different cut. So it may look the same. You want to make sure you got the right machine if you're trying to do one cut or the other. But the third machine, as I showed you earlier, is going to be doing our panel cuts. Since we're not using these machines as frequently as other machines because we're using them for our doors, they are on wheels. So we'll push them back into a little storage corner. We'll pull them out as needed and use them. And when we're done, we push them back. This allows us to have a little bit more room in the shop than being so crowded. But uh, just know that they're not normally out in the middle of the room like this. We just move them out as needed. If you have any questions on how to use these machines or any other machines in the shop, please talk to your instructor so we can get these questions answered for you and that you will understand how to use them safely and correctly.